Welcome to MedCampus. In this video, let's quickly discuss what is the tongue deviation observed in case of a hypoglossal nerve palsy. Hypoglossal nerve is cranial nerve 12 and what is its function? It supplies all muscles of tongue. It supplies all muscles of tongue and it's a general somatic afferent. Okay, it is general somatic afferent. It supplies all muscles of tongue except palatoglossus. And this palatoglossus muscle is supplied by the vagus, right? So this is one important MCQ. Now, when you uh, look at the clinical presentation of a hypoglossal nerve palsy, the main symptom is deviation of the tongue. It can be on the same side of the lesion or it can be on the opposite side of the lesion. And this deviation, the function is because of the muscle called genioglossus, which is actually supplied by the hypoglossal nerve. Now, only remember this important muscle. So, what is the function of what is the function of genioglossus? This is right side of the tongue. This is left side of the tongue. The function of the genioglossus is it moves tongue to the opposite side. So, right side is this, and when you look at the left side, left side. To the opposite side. So the left genioglossus pushes to the tongue to the right side and the right genioglossus pushes the tongue to the left side. So with this basic knowledge, now let's see. The now supply from the right side of the tongue, right side of the tongue goes to, so I'm drawing the medulla here, right? So this is the medulla, the central canal. We have, we have hypo, hypo, glossal nucleus in the medulla, hypoglossal nucleus on both sides in the medulla. Now you, when you look at the supply from the right side, it is going into the right hypoglossal nucleus, from the left side it is going to the left hypoglossal nucleus, but from here to the cortex, so this is the cortical area, to the cortex there is crossing. From the right side it is going to the left corticospinal tract and from the left side it is going to the right corticospinal tract. So this is the right corticospinal tract and this is the left corticospinal tract. So you have to remember this important finding called crossed fibers. So they are crossed supranuclearly that is above the nucleus they are crossed. Above the nucleus they are crossed. Now let's look at the right supranuclear palsy. So the right supranuclear palsy, what are the findings you see in right supranuclear palsy? So in the right supranuclear palsy, what happens? The left side of the tongue gets affected. So when the left side of the tongue gets affected, the tongue when protruded pushes to the opposite side. Okay, the tongue gets pushed to the opposite side. So what we can say? If the damage is in the upper motor neuron, supranuclear means upper motor neuron, the tongue, the tongue deviates away from the side of the lesion, away from the side of the lesion because it is the healthier part is pushing it to the side. So if there is a right supranuclear palsy, the tongue gets pushed to the left side. Hope you're getting my point. Along with that, one more thing you need to understand here is there is no fasciculations or atrophy. Fasciculations or atrophy are features of lower motor nuclear lesion. So you will not see any fasciculations of the tongue giving bag like bag of warm appearance or you will not see any atrophy. So that is the reason and mainly the patient will have speech difficulties is the predominant finding. Speech difficulties is the predominant finding. Tongue moves to the opposite side and there is no fasciculations or atrophy. Now what about the left lower motor neuron palsy okay? or infranuclear palsy or it can be a nuclear. So at the level of the nucleus or below the level of the nucleus, at the level of the nucleus or below the level of the nucleus, if there is paralysis, what happens? The same side of the tongue gets affected and because the healthier side is pushing to the same side, the pushing of the tongue is same side. So the deviation of the tongue is to the same side of the lesion and you will see presence of fasciculations plus atrophy and finally 
fasciculations plus atrophy is the major finding major finding you see definitely you will also see some speech difficulties but the major finding characteristic finding is fasciculation atrophy giving bag of warm appearance very important bag bag of warm appearance